I'm here today with the NetGuardian Voice 16 G2. This is an SNMP RTU that you can put out at a remote location to let you know what's happening. And as the name implies, it has a special voice dialer function that lets you dial out and give yourself an alert message to you or your team if something important is happening. For more routine alarms, you can also get SNMP traps, email alerts. Email alerts can be converted to SMS alerts to your phone. So a variety of different ways to get status on your remote location using this device. So let's take a look through the front and back panel and I'll walk you through it. This is a standard 19 inch or 23 inch rack mount. So you can put it in either one of those rack standards and we'll ship you both sets of ears. So the front panel, we have a USB craft port. This leads you to a terminal interface that you most likely won't need. However, you can still use it for advanced debug and other functions that are unique to this interface. But in general, you'll use the web interface to do configuration and monitoring. It's a very nice, it's a good web interface, and it just gives you access to all the functions you need. But if you want to do some advanced debug, this can be handy if you have a tricky network situation you're trying to work through. We will put the MAC address and the serial number on the front of every unit. This is great if you're calling into tech support and you want to know exactly what your build has. Because while you may have a NetGuardian Voice 16 G2, there are dozens of different build options that you can configure. And we only know which unique combination you have if we can either look you up in our database or if you give us a serial number, that's absolutely the fastest. So this sticker is handy. It's got some information and it's pretty well laminated. So it's pretty durable even if you're out at a remote location where most of these devices go. You have some LEDs on the front. This will tell you if you have an alarm. It'll be blinking if the alarm is new. Uh, there's off hook. This tells you if we're making a dial to send out a voice message at the moment. And if you do get an alarm and it's blinking, you can click that act button and then that will tell the device, yes, I see it. I am taking care of it and you don't need to keep blinking. This way, if something new comes in, it'll start blinking again. And it's just a great way to keep tabs on your alarms when you're out working at the site. Most of the time you're gonna be hundreds of miles away perhaps, so you won't use this. But if you are out at the site, the act button and the LEDs are a good indicator so you can see what's going on. It's always ironic if an RTU doesn't have LEDs because then you might be right next to it, but you don't know that anything's wrong. You come back to the central office and you realize, oh great, now I gotta drive out there again. So it's a good way to know what's going on before you leave. And then the last bits on the front panel are D-wire. This is an internal temp sensor that's just on the ambient air here. So we punch a hole in the metal and we stick the sensor out but this is limited in what it can do. It's a great baseline to have, basic temperature monitoring without adding anything else but you probably want to add some other sensors. So we have the D-wire port and I have a couple D-wire sensors I can show you. They do all sorts of things. This is wind speed with an external anemometer. So if you've got a helicopter site, that's good. This would go on an HVAC vent to tell you the temperature and the airflow to let you know if your filters are clogged and just if your unit is operating properly. There's vibration. So this is to go on a generator maybe, let you know that it's in fact vibrating and is operating. So there are a whole range of different D-wire sensors. This is just a couple. And all of them will connect to this one port because they support daisy chaining. So if we look at one of them, you have an in and an out port. You have two ports. So you'd come from the remote, the NetGuardian here, and we go to the first, and then you could continue and have a string of up to 16. The temp sensor here counts as one. So you can have up to 15 of these external pods. So now if we flip you around to the back panel, you can see this is a plus 24 volt model. We also have NEG48, it's plus 12, a variety of different power inputs available on different NetGuardian models. This one is a plus 24 and you can see the range is pretty wide. We always wanna be the last thing to fail. So you get a nice wide range and voltage. So if anything's going wrong with your power system, we wanna be able to tolerate a pretty broad range. There's a grounding lug here to tie it into your grounding system. This is a dual power model, so you've got A and B feeds. You can see this is the plug. We'll ship you two of these, one for each, but I just showed it one, so you can see that this would pop off. It is nice and locked down there with screws, so it's not going anywhere. And then the screws on the top are how you close the gate to clamp your wires in. So that's a nice secure power connection, and you'd have a second one here. Then the fuses are GMT. If you're not familiar with the GMT fuse, they just slide in and out of these slots here. Pretty straightforward. If it's the first time you use them, you wanna make sure you orient this correctly, but you just insert it into the slot and you're ready to go. So that's the dual fuses. You wouldn't wanna have a single fuse with dual inputs because if one fails, then the whole thing doesn't work. So we always do dual fuses if we're doing dual power inputs. 
This is the telco jack. So this is where you'd hook up your POTS phone line to be able to do those voice dial outs when you have critical alarms. This is a 50 pin Amphenol connector. So if you wanna to go to a 66 block or wire wrap, something like that, it's a handy tool. You can also just have a ship you an Amphenol cable that goes to bare wire and you have all the different colored twisted pairs that you can use. So you have 16 discrete inputs. These are useful for any kind of sensor like a door, motion, smoke detector, water on the floor, anything that's either on or off. A discrete sensor will let you know what's happening. You can also take an equipment alarm. So if your equipment has contact closures, you pull them into the discretes here and you know exactly what's going on. So this is a medium capacity. We have some RTUs with 64 or more, some with as little as four. So 16 is a nice middle of the road amount for small and medium locations. You have a pair of analogs here. So this will allow you to take in voltage or current from a variety of different external sensors or from a battery string, anything like that. And then you have two control relay outputs. So this would let you activate a device, turn something off, momentarily power cycle things. They're great to toggle power on and off to equipment or send control commands to tell equipment to do something. You have the support phone number and tech support is right down the hall from me here in Fresno, California and always free. So it's a great uh, phone number to reach out. You can also get in touch with us via the website. And then finally, we have the network connection, the 10100 base T port and you'll have an indicator to let you know if it's running in 100 mode. And I think nowadays most networks would support that. So that gives you a little extra bandwidth. Although these devices really use a minimal amount of uh, data back and forth. The LAN does a bunch of different things. It gives you access to the web interface when it's on the network. You're able to send email notifications. You're able to send SNMP traps. So that is the most critical port here. Even if this did fail though, you'd still fail over to being able to dial out. So it is good to have a remote that has multiple output options. And if both of these failed and you go out to the site to see what's going on, of course the LEDs are a nice, you're in the room, last ditch way to see what's going on. But it would be an incredibly rare scenario where you'd lose both network and dial access to a site. Usually having just two methods of transport is sufficient. If you have any questions about this NetGuardian Voice 16 or you want to see any other NetGuardian models, there are actually several dozen to choose from and each one has dozens of different builds. So there's a lot of customization you can get with these remotes to do just about anything you want. Mostly they deal in discretes, analogs and controls, outputting to SNMP, but there are different protocols, there are different transport. Some are not rack mount, some will mount on a DIN rail or wall mount. So a whole host of different options. And frankly, the website can be a little bit overwhelming, especially if you're new to this. So give us a call, it's always free, 1-800-693-0351, or go to the website, www.dpstaily.com, and we'll prepare a PDF proposal with a drawing to show you exactly how a NetGuardian like this would help you remotely monitor your sites.